Hey guys, welcome back to the Unlocked Podcast. Today we are doing a deep dive into the microbiome and how fasting specifically affects the microbiome as well as the gut-brain connection with the topic of fat loss. Today's topic means a lot to me because the microbiome has changed everything for me. I was struggling for a very long time to reach my body goals. I was stalled out for years and it wasn't until I combined these two major forces between fasting and healing my microbiome that I unlocked not only losing 24 pounds of stuck on weight, but it now opened up an entirely new lifestyle of flexibility for me where I really don't have to worry about macros. I can eat basically whatever I want, but I just want to be mindful of my microbiome. Now in today's episode, we're really going to be going deep into this topic. We're gonna go into what is the microbiome as well as how your gut is directly connected to the brain and how weight loss is connected to your microbiome and how your microbiome can actually change your body weight set point. We're gonna talk about different foods that are beneficial to help us with our microbiome and what we should be eating, what we shouldn't be eating to help balance this out. Leaky gut, gut dysbiosis, SIBO, and how fasting helps heal the gut in different ways to do that, that you can literally put into action today and start seeing results within three days of implementing. We're also gonna be talking about different ways to heal the gut and what you absolutely should never do when it comes to your gut microbiome and what can completely blast and reverse and damage any of the work that you are doing that could keep you stalled out for a very long time. For years, 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 I was on a very restrictive diet where I cut out an entire macronutrient group. I was not eating carbohydrates. And for the longest time, I thought carbs were bad. I thought if I ate carbohydrates, I would blow up like a balloon and I would gain all of this weight and I had to be low carb just to maintain. But at the same time, I was slowly gaining weight. And I was experiencing incredible stomach pain, bloating, and inflammation, and I didn't know why? So here's my story in a nutshell, okay? I lost 60 pounds, right? But then I started gaining 20 pounds back. And with that 20 pounds, I was constantly trying to not only get to the losing the 20 pounds, but then surpassing that. And the entire time I felt like I was fighting against my body. I was focusing on manipulating my macronutrients. I was not focusing on calorie content and I was not focusing on my microbiome. Now I hit my breaking point and I was about to completely give up on all diets, on all things, on my body, on everything. I was about to just throw in the towel and say, screw this, I cannot live the rest of my life feeling like I'm on a diet, but I'm gaining weight. So at this exact moment, I realized, okay, I have nothing to lose. I'm leaning into just accepting my body for how it was. But at the same time, I wish, I wish there was a way that I could reach my body goals without restriction, without feeling like I have to count my carbs or that I have to, I like that I can't eat certain foods, right? I just wanted to just live completely free. I just wanted to be free of it all. And the stomach pain and the issues that I was experiencing with the bloating was a serious problem for me, a serious problem. I would eat something and I would blow up like I was nine months pregnant overnight. And then it would take me a very long time to get rid of that bloating. And then it would just keep coming back over and over and over again. And it was very frustrating and it was painful and it was terrible. So I was in Instagram, scrolling around Instagram, and then this test pops up that you can test your microbiome. Now, we will talk about this a little bit later in this podcast. I'm going to give you guys tools that you can use if you're not testing your microbiome because I do realize that testing your microbiome can be very expensive, but I was at the point where I I needed a solution and I had tried everything and nothing was working for me. And so the microbiome test popped up and I was like, okay, this is going to analyze my body, my data and find out what is causing my problems. What is causing me to be stalled out? You know, the gut microbiome is a very powerful, has a very powerful impact on 
our hunger, our cravings, our um, ability to even lose body fat because if you are inflamed and if your microbiome is causing inflammation because of the overgrowth of bad gut bugs versus the good gut bugs, you will stay stalled out literally no matter what you do. So healing your body becomes very, very important. I didn't know this at the time. I was literally just scrolling through Instagram and this test pops up. And I was like, what the hell? I have nothing to lose. I'm going to get this test. I honestly didn't know much about it when I initially ordered it. It just looked like this could be the solution. So I was going to buy it. So I did. All right. The test kit comes. It's like a blood test. And also it's a fecal sample. That sounds disgusting, but it actually wasn't so bad. You know, I'm a mom. I've dealt with much more than that. And I have a dog so I could handle it. All right. So I sent it back to the company and I, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. But what came back from that was incredible. And I followed the recommendations on there to heal my gut microbiome. And at this time, I was not focusing on fat loss. I just wanted to heal the bloating and the gut issues. I followed the directions on there, and it was literally an overnight, immediate change within my body. And I experienced something I hadn't experienced in years, and that was to live without the pain and the bloating and the swelling and all of that. And then all of a sudden... I started craving different foods. And all of a sudden, I started being able to fast longer, easier. And all of a sudden, I started losing weight. And then I felt like I had control. And I felt like, wow, I can actually eat whatever I want as long as I'm staying away from the foods that my body is literally telling me from this test that I should not be eating. And this is the crazy thing. Some of the foods that we are told to eat that are helpful for a microbiome came up on my list of foods not to eat because my specific microbiome had a specific, the, the good gut bugs and the bad gut bugs are doing weird things within my gut and they're reacting in weird ways. So something like asparagus for the average person is recommended for gut microbiome health. But for me, I, I should stay away from asparagus because asparagus is going to cause a bad reaction within my gut microbiome at this moment. Later on, I can add it back. So basically, long story short, I followed the directions here. I implemented that along with fasting. And then I went and I did some research into fasting and the microbiome and how fasting impacts the microbiome. Because for my own health goals, I wanted to make sure that what I was doing was creating a good environment for my gut bugs. And I unlocked and uncovered some of the things that I'm going to share with you guys in today's podcast episode that is mind blowing to me. And so I put it into place, I implemented, and it's created this amazing life that I'm so grateful for, and I'm so excited to share it with all of you. Now, you can do what I'm going to share with you today without having to go buy a microbiome test, but if you want to get your microbiome tested so you can get a personalized list for yourself, I'll put the link in the description below. I'm not partnered with them in any way. I'm I only have an affiliate link, which a lot of people do when they find a product they love, they can get an affiliate link so that I can offer a special discount to you guys. So that's in the description below. But remember, what we're going to talk about today, you can implement what I'm going to share with you today immediately right away. Now, a lot of you guys on this channel, you know me from the fasting. I just did a video in the last episode all about unlocking OMAD, which is one meal a day fasting, and how I've utilized that to help me stick to calorie restriction and get that po to the point where my body is burning fat, right, and losing body weight. But before this, before all of that would be possible for me, I needed to heal my body because an inflamed body is not going to lose body fat. You've got to heal your gut first. And I actually took about a month to heal my gut before then it was like, okay, weight loss started happening and becoming effortless. And I started trying to lose weight, right? There, there's no worse feeling than trying to lose weight and feeling like no matter what you do, you cannot lose weight. First things first, let's get started with what is the microbiome. So the microbiome is a home to trillions of microorganisms, including bacteria, fungus, and viruses, even parasites. Okay, so together they form the gut microbiome. A healthy gut microbiome has a variety of different bacteria, and everyone's gut microbiome is different. Now, this is the crazy thing. You have more, more bacteria in your gut than there are stars in the galaxy. If you lined up all of the little gut bugs 
it would reach from here to the moon. That's how much bacteria is living in your gut. And what can happen is we can get into a situation where we allow these bad bugs, they're called, to take over and overgrow within our system. And then the good bugs could die off. And so I found some strategies to help really just supercharge those good gut bugs so that those good gut bugs thrive. And when they thrive, they help you achieve your goals. So the bacteria you eat play a key role in how you metabolize food, your mood, your energy, your overall health and well-being. So first things first, let's talk about how microbiome plays a role in weight loss. So scientists have actually looked at and taken a fecal sample from an obese mouse and put it in a thin mouse and that mouse has be would be then become obese. They did the same with the thin mouse and put it into an obese mouse and that obese mouse became thinner. This is probably the future. I have heard that fecal transplants are something that could be coming eventually, um, but there is a lot of dangers that come along with that because when you transfer your fecal sample, you could also transfer diseases and stuff like that. So I don't think we'll see that yet, but this is just a very good example that your gut bugs, which live in your large intestine mainly. The small intestine doesn't have very much bugs at all. And if there are bugs in your small intestine, that could be a sign of something called SIBO, small intestinal overgrowth. Now the microbiome can affect the way we metabolize food, which can affect our metabolism. As example, there are bacteria in your gut that can metabolize carbohydrates in a way that leads to more calories being absorbed by the body. Chronic inflammation changes the way our body absorbs nutrients and can actually lead to insulin resistance. And so inflammation is another big way that the, the microbiome impacts weight loss. The microbiome also impacts hormone regulation. And as an example, certain gut bugs can actually produce a signal to the brain that tells your brain that you're full, manipulating the hormones, telling your body you are full. Imbalances of the microbiome can lead to fatigue. So this actually impacts your energy level and the amount of activity that you may be getting in a day. And then also the brain function with the gut-brain access. Your gut actually communicates directly with your brain. So the gut can actually produce different neurotransmitters that go directly to the brain, including serotonin, dopamine, and GABA, which are important for regulating mood, behavior, and cognition. If the gut is not healthy, your mental health will be impacted. And we all know how mood correlates with weight loss. Bacillus actually creates dopamine, lactobacillus creates serotonin, and bifidobacterium creates GABA. Specific foods help your body create that serotonin. These include turkey, eggs, salmon, nuts, seeds, dark chocolate, fruits, and vegetables. If your gut is not healthy, you can have something called gut dysbiosis. This is when you have an overgrowth of unhealthy gut bugs and you've got an undergrowth or a starving off of the good gut bugs. This can happen if you're feeding your body the wrong foods and you're allowing those bad gut bugs to take over. Now, what can happen is you can feel terrible, groggy, tired all the time, drained, and you're not sure why. You have no idea what's going on. Why is this happening to you? Like, why do you always feel like you need to go for that afternoon coffee? And the gut could be the reason. And so healing your gut could be the difference between actually achieving your goals and staying stalled out or just being miserable, literally miserable. So with gut dysbiosis, your goal should be to balance out your gut microbiome and and create an environment where the good gut bugs can flourish. Think of it like a garden. You want the good gut bugs to grow and to just be a beautiful array of a garden with all different kinds of flora. And then you want to take care of the weeds. Now, how do you take care of the weeds? I'm going to share with you guys the secret today of fasting to get rid of these weeds. Now, you probably think, okay, 
with fasting. If I'm fasted, how does that actually impact my gut microbiome? Now, here's the thing. If you're constantly eating all of the time, you're never giving your gut a break. It's constantly going through the motions of digesting the food that you're eating. And these gut bugs, they actually have a circadian rhythm of their own. And so we've all heard that it's beneficial for us to eat when the sun is up, right? For our circadian rhythm. After the sun goes down, if you're eating food, you're actually working against your circadian rhythm, which can hold you back in a lot of ways, but partially because it's holding your microbiome back because your microbiome wants to go to bed. It wants to sleep. It wants to turn off. Now, we are in a society where we are eating constantly, around the clock, nonstop eating. So if you start fasting, simply fasting 12 hours, now all of a sudden you're giving your body that break so that your your gut can go through a cleansing process and heal. Now, this is the cool thing. The bad gut bugs, those bugs starve off very early. So if you go without eating for 12 hours, 16 hours um, and beyond, those gut bugs, they cannot survive without food for that long. But the good gut bugs actually flourish and they actually, it produces an atmosphere for them to be able to start multiplying and repopulating. And so this is what we want. We want an environment like this. And so when you fast and the longer you fast within the day, the better. So for me, I got into fasting with like a, a one meal a day fast because that to me, I could feel my gut healing very quickly. Within five days, I started really feeling a dramatic difference. And by eating one meal a day, one main meal, I'm giving my gut this long duration of time of like 23 hours a day to um, regenerate, heal itself, but also killing off those bad gut bugs. Now, we all know that there is a issue, major issue with things like my, uh, antibiotics. So when you consume antibiotics, you are wiping out your good gut bugs and your gut bad gut bugs. Now, sometimes we have to take antibiotics. It's a life or death situation, but sometimes it's not so life and death and we could probably skip it. Um, and make sure you ask your doctor, make sure they're not just overly prescribing this. Like I've seen people get prescribed antibiotics just simply because they're going to travel out of the country, not because they actually need the antibiotics or there is something going on, like they have strep throat or there's something that could put them into like a life-threatening scenario. Now, if you do take an antibiotic, the best thing that you can do to start um, repopulating your microbiome would then to be to take like a probiotic or prebiotic. Now, these type of things, probiotics and prebiotics, you don't necessarily have to take every single day, but they're very good, specifically if you're repairing damage to your gut and you're trying to build up a new population of good gut bugs or like I mentioned before either you're coming off an illness or you did some damage to your microbiome or you had some um, antibiotics you took now other ways that you could damage your microbiome is through alcohol use now alcohol if you can imagine this and this is a great perspective to put it into okay and you might notice after you drink alcohol, you might notice some bloating, some swelling, some facial swelling. For me, it happens every time. Every time I drink alcohol, I bloat up like a balloon. And this is why, okay? Alcohol, for centuries, we've used alcohol to kill bacteria on wounds, on wherever, on cleaning alcohol is used. Alcohol is used in antibacterial products. So you can imagine if you're consuming alcohol, you are killing some gut bugs in there, okay? Especially if you're drinking a lot of alcohol. And usually when I drink alcohol, it's when I'm on vacation or I'm celebrating something. And usually it's not just one glass of wine. If you are working on healing your microbiome, I would suggest give it a good stretch of no alcohol. Try to go like 10 to 30 days or longer without alcohol, especially if your goal is fat loss. And I'm not here to judge anyone. Like I, I love a good drink just like anybody else, but I also recognize, is this aligned with my health goals? Is this going to do damage to my microbiome? 
The answer is yes most of the time, and I just got back from the Florida Keys. I had 10 days where I was literally throwing bombs at my microbiome, and I am rebounding and healing my microbiome, and I'm deploying things. Everything that I'm sharing with you guys today on what I'm doing to now get back to where I was with my microbiome. Now your microbiome can be damaged very, very easily. It's a very fragile system and it can also come back and repair itself quickly. It takes about three days for your microbiome to do a complete turnaround and start coming back. So if you do damage your microbiome and you do do something that you know, you can tell it's off, um, you got to give it three days and then can start repopulating and going back in the right direction. And fasting is a major tool to help speed this up. So the amount of fasting that you should do for your microbiome, if you want to start the healing and start allowing yourself to start repopulating and killing off those bad gut bugs without killing off the good gut bugs, that's the magic between behind the fasting um, would be to focus on a 16, eight hour fast to begin and then to try to get to like an 18 hour fast. Now, if you can do a couple days of 24 hour fasting, that's great. If you can do more than that, that's even more amazing, okay? So your gut is going to respond very, very quickly. Mine does. Mine responds extremely quickly once I get back to fasting with my normal routine of OMAD. Now, there are other things that will tear your microbiome apart besides just alcohol, and that is NSAIDs. So ibuprofen, you take an ibuprofen, it's literally like dropping a bomb on your gut. And I hate to say it, but that is what the research is showing. And so sometimes, you know, there's no other choice. You've got to take one. But instead of taking two, try to take one, okay? And this is also another example of when you would want to deploy the probiotics and prebiotics. Now, what I like about the microbiome test that I take is that they actually will create custom supplements based on what my microbiome is lacking and what I need more of. So it will, my probiotics and prebiotics that are created from that, which is completely optional, um, is made specifically for my body and what my body is missing as far as the gut bugs that are missing from my population. So you don't necessarily need to use probiotics or prebiotics every day as a supplement form, but use Using them at specific times when you know you need to heal is extremely helpful. Now, um, there are foods that you can eat that are incredible, probiotics, prebiotics. Now, that's going to be extremely important as well. So alcohol and NSAIDs are the real main ways. Now, some people will say artificial sweeteners can harm the gut, but there really haven't been any studies that really show this in great detail. Um, and the ones that have tried really just use a really high amount of the artificial sweetener versus what you would be taking anyway. And some of the studies on like aspartame and Diet Coke actually have shown some benefits to your microbiome. So listen, it's a personal choice at the end of the day. If you feel bloating, if you feel swelling, if you feel like it's holding you back, then maybe cutting back on the artificial sweeteners is a good idea, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, I mentioned earlier SIBO. Now, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, can cause some symptoms. And typically you can tell if you have SIBO if within one to three hours of eating, you start experiencing those gut issues because SIBO is in the small intestine. And that's typically when food is in the small intestine. Now, beyond that time frame, that's how you know the issues are in your large intestine affecting the majority of your population of your microbiome. You can experience gas, bloating, swelling, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, anemia, nutrient deficiencies, and malabsorption that can happen if you have SIBO. Now, one of the best ways to help with SIBO, and again, I'm not a medical professional or doctor. This is just what I found through listening to the experts and doing my own reading um, is through starving off the bacterial overgrowth that happens within the small intestine through fasting. So if you're if you want to heal your body, I would say do like a 24-hour fast. 
um, to kick it off or do three of them. Do three days where you're doing a 24-hour fast. Maybe you're just eating lunch. I do recommend you check out the last podcast episode on OMAD, One Meal a Day Fasting, so you can learn how to do that and the easiest way to go about doing that. But there's a lot of different types of fasting. Really, we're talking about the short-term fasted durations like... Um, 24 hours or less. Not talking about the extended fast, which also do have some benefits there, but you're going to need to really consult a physician and a doctor, and it's way beyond the scope of this podcast. We're talking about the short durations, and actually the microbiome shows, shows to respond very well to the short duration of fast of 24 hours or less because you do not want to starve off your good gut bugs, right? We want and that seems to be the optimal amount of time is right within that time frame of 24 hours or less for those gut bugs. Now, SIBO is different than leaky gut. A leaky gut is when the membranes of your gut wall um, either break open, like the fencing will break open, and then now the food that you're eating can leak through into your bloodstream and your body will create an immune response to attack that. Now, this can cause um, gut allergies and issues like that with your gut. You will notice digestive issues, autoimmune issues, skin issues. Now, again, when you give your gut that long duration of time to heal itself, that's when it can start healing the gut lining and the gut um, wall. And so that's where if you suffer from leaky gut, fasting can just be a very powerful way to heal this within yourself. Okay, now I mentioned probiotics and prebiotics, but you want to be eating foods that are rich in probiotics and prebiotics. Now, what's a probiotic? A probiotic is actually a food that contains the live bacteria that's going to colonate your gut, okay? So we want to be consuming, and, and it's more powerful for you to consume it in whole food form than to get it from a supplement. So we want to be doing this. It's almost like a one-two punt. So here they are, and I've got a list of them. So I'm going to read it from the paper so I don't miss one, okay? So yogurt, one of the most popular probiotic-rich foods. Look for plain, unsweetened yogurt and live and active cultures. Kefir is a fermented milk drink that's similar to yogurt but has a thinner consistency also rich in probiotics kimchi a korean dish made of fermented vegetables such as cabbage radish scallions it's spicy tangy contains very beneficial bacteria i don't personally like kimchi but that's a side note it's like way too spicy and i like spicy food but it, it gets me i'm not i'm not into it <laughs> Sauerkraut, a traditional German dish made of fermenting cabbage, is rich in vitamins, minerals, and contains probiotics. Now, sauerkraut is one of my absolute favorite ways to get in probiotic-rich foods. I will eat sauerkraut even in my fasted window because especially the one with by the brand Bubbies, if you can find that in the refrigerated section, it's a very white, like, looking sauerkraut. It's clean. It's so good. So that sauerkraut to me tastes like vinegar chips and it gives me the ability to feel like I'm eating something, chewing something while I'm fasted, but there's zero calories in there. Okay. And it's basically just like pumping your body with those extra gut bugs. Also kombucha, a fermented tea made by a culture of bacteria in the yeast. It's fizzy, sweet, and tart and rich in probiotics. So that is a form of alcohol, actually. It is um, a fermented alcohol. So this can help your gut. So if you are going to choose alcohol, Alcohol, then that would be the one that you would actually probably want to choose. I have not tried that yet for myself. Um, tempeh is a fermented soybean product that's a good source of protein and probiotics. Miso is a traditional Japanese seasoning made from fermented soybeans, and it's a good source of protein, vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. I've also not tried that that I know of. Pickles, of course, are cucumbers that have been soaked in brine and water vinegar and salt. Pickling process involves the growth of beneficial bacteria, which makes them a good source of probiotics. Now, not all pickled 
products are going to contain probiotics, so you definitely want to check the container to make sure there's live and active cultures in there. You guys are going to like this, the ones especially who um, love to eat bread, but sourdough bread, um, it's made with a natural starter that contains beneficial bacteria, a good source of fiber, and it's easier to digest, digest than regular bread. And then cheese. Some types of cheese, such as cheddar, gouda, and mozzarella, contain probiotics. However, not all types of cheese are pro probiotic rich, so it is important to check the label. Getting in as many of these a day is beneficial, but focus on just one a day to begin. If you can get one probiotic in a day, then that is getting you somewhere. If you can do two, that's amazing. If you can do three or four or five, then you are a serious superstar. The next is the prebiotics, right? So this is food for the bacteria. We want to feed our good gut bugs and they like this food. The bad gut bugs don't like this food. They like the junk food. <laughs> and they will actually tell your brain to eat more junk food to feed them. They like cause the cravings. So another reason to try to starve those bad gut bugs out so you lose the cravings for that crap, okay? So here are some prebiotic rich foods. Garlic, onions, leeks, asparagus, bananas, apples, chicory root, Jerusalem, Jerusalem artichokes, dandelion greens, oats, barley, flaxseed, chai seeds, cocoa, seaweed, cognac root, wheat bran, um, psyllium husk. Okay, so if you can add these to your diet, that is great. But like I mentioned earlier about the microbiome testing, some, because we're all different, we all have different species of bugs. And if you have an overgrowth of a specific one that is causing issues with specific foods, it's going to cause you to feel bloated, even though you might be eating something that you think that's supposed to be great for my gut bugs. Okay. So that's where if you have the availability to be able to test your microbiome, then I would say do it. If you don't, if you're not, <laughs> going to get tested or you can't, maybe financially you can't swing it at this time. I'm going to give you action steps and things that you can do today. And if you do get the test, I'm actually going to share with you how to use that data to achieve your goals. So here are some other ways that we can heal the gut that our microbiome actually loves and will thrive within this environment. So we know the gut microbiome has its own circadian rhythm which means not only is it important for you to be eating during the daylight hours, but try not to eat in the evening hours, which ties great in with fasting, especially early time restricted eating. It's ideal to go at least three to four hours before bed without having any food. Allow that food to digest in your system and get fully absorbed so that when you go to sleep, your body has nothing to do other than focus on healing and rejuvenating your body. So sleep is, is incredibly important. But the other thing is, as you heal your microbiome, you're going to notice that you are it's easier to sleep. You're going to sleep a little bit more content and smoothly. Now, it's interesting because when I started going to bed on an empty stomach, you think that would be like keep you awake. But actually, it's... I've never been, it's never been so easy to just fall asleep and stay asleep. So, and also I'm not waking up throughout the night. And especially if you stop drinking a couple hours or an hour before bed, that's helpful as well. Obviously hydration is extremely important with fat loss and fasting and also the microbiome. But the other thing that you can do is exercise. Exercise has shown a positive impact on the gut microbiome. It's also shown to be one of those activities that your bad gut bugs don't particularly like. I picked up an exercise that I absolutely love to do that also helps with like lymph drainage, clearing out of those toxins, and there's just a ton of benefits associated with this specific type of exercise, and that is rebounding. So I got this little mini trampoline and I jump on it for it. What started with two minutes a day is now up to 30 to 40 minutes a day. And it's amazing how much stamina this builds up, but 
the up and down motion specifically, blood flowing, and also it gets the, the movement through your digestive tract, it speeds that up. And so what I like to do is I like to jump on the rebounder or go for a walk, any type of activity or movement. Um, and especially if you can do it outside, that's even more beneficial to kind of tie in the circadian rhythms and like getting in that additional sunlight, which helps the microbiome as well. So if you can do a workout outside, that's great. If not, that's okay too. The point is we want to get our blood pumping and our body moving. Um, I like to work out right after I eat my main meal to help with clearing out the glucose and when you're doing that jumping motion, especially on the rebounder, you are helping that digestive process along. You're helping to move the food throughout your digestive tract, which helps then to get it from the small intestine into the large intestine where your gut bugs could then feed on the foods, the types of foods that your body cannot absorb specifically, which is the fibrous foods, right? So all of those foods that are very high in fiber are extremely good for your gut microbiome. Microbiome. So I will put a list of different foods that is like a one size fits all list in the description below. If you want to download that, you can check that list out and that will give you like a starting point of like, okay, I should try to eat more of these type of foods and I should try to avoid these types of foods. Now, I am a huge proponent on balance and you can eat some of these foods that might be on the avoid, not the avoid list for your personal results, but like some processed foods I think are okay as long as you're getting in those foods that you need to feed your gut bugs, okay? Because the whole goal of fasting is to starve those bad bugs and to really get those good bugs growing and multiplying because when they do, they're going to impact your cravings. All of a sudden, you're going to want more salads. All of a sudden, you're going to want more veggies. All of a sudden the things that you used to enjoy like ice cream and chocolate cake and those sort of things aren't as appealing to you anymore. It's just you won't be as attracted to it and that's how it works with the gut brain access. So there was one study that found that professional rugby players, they took a look at their gut microbiome and then they looked at people who don't exercise at all and they found a much more diverse wide variety of gut microbia in the athletes versus the people who don't work out. And while it's true, the good gut bugs can help with your energy level in general, the, the focus and the mood and that sort of thing, which all ties into wanting to work out more. And, and as you heal your microbiome, you're going to find that you're probably going to want to go and get out there and start doing some workouts that maybe you weren't doing before. So even if you're not working out for weight loss or fat loss or muscle gain and some of the other benefits associated with that for your body goals, working out for your microbiome is a very good reason and purpose to work out. It's going to help those those good bugs. Um, and, you know, you can ask yourself, okay, is the good bug, are the good bugs thriving off of working out? Or because my gut bugs are thriving now, all of a sudden I'm working out more. Now that's you know, cause and effect, who knows which way it goes. Now, the microbiome is still a very new study topic and new discoveries are coming out all of the time and we're learning new things every day about this. And it's amazing when you actually focus on actually healing this area of your body, what it can unlock for you in your life. So, I think the gut actually might have more to do with a lot of other aspects of our life as well, including personality and stuff, than we might not even realize. Your microbiome and the gut bacteria within your microbiome, this is crazy, this is a crazy fact, is over five pounds worth of microscopic gut bugs in your GI tract. Now, crazy, right? And a lot of times when you go to the bathroom, a lot of what you excrete there is actually gut bugs coming out that are dying off because we like we said we want to be dying off killing off not all but a lot of the 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 bugs that are causing these issues right we obviously want to take care of 
like little pets. They're little pets in your gut. We want to take care of them and we want them to thrive. We want them to grow. We want them to reproduce. We want them to multiply. We want them to uh, make friends <laughs> and stay a while because as hosts, they take care of us and we take care of them. We provide a home, we provide food, and in turn, they create these metabolites, they, they create these neurotransmitters, these um, hormones, all of these things, you know, the short chain fatty acids. They create this these things for us to help us thrive. We could not survive without the bacteria within our gut. So it plays a major, major role. And I don't, I just think right now we are learning so much about it. So I would say your action steps would be to focus on getting in some of those fermented foods, at least one a day, just try, you know, um, probiotic, prebiotic types of foods, um, try to add those into your diet. And then um, focus on the fasting to starve out those bad gut bugs. That is the quickest way to get there if you're looking to really heal your gut quickly. While you are fasted, I suggest drinking water or black coffee, keeping in a very sterile environment for your gut bugs. I also drink something called ketones while fasting. That's the only thing that I will consume fasted other than water and black coffee because it helps with other benefits of fasting in particular. And... Um, Try to extend your fast beyond 16 hours a couple times a month or a week, or you can do it daily. So there, that's basically the main strategy involved here. Um, it's better to try to add in things versus avoid things. But as we get into the avoid list topic, let's talk a little bit more about if you do get your microbiome tested and you get your results back, the cool thing is they are literally going to give you a list of food that you need to be focusing on mostly. So you can look at your avoid list and you can be mindful of trying to stay away from a lot of the foods that are listed there because they're causing damage in some way. And if you click the foods, you it will expand upon it and it will tell you exactly why you should be avoiding these foods. And remember, that doesn't mean forever. Red meat was on my avoid list when I took my first test. Now, a few months later, after healing my microbiome, I had it tested again to see how the foods changed. And of course, it changed. Red meat is now on my enjoy list. I can have red meat whenever I want and it's not causing that issue. Now, my gut bugs were causing a toxic gas from consuming red meat that I didn't recognize or realize or think that that was my problem. You're gonna to want to avoid those foods that are listed as your main priority. And then of your superfoods, now they don't, the superfoods that are listed are is not a one size fits all superfoods thing. That is the targeted foods that they want you to get more of in your day to really try to prioritize. So if you can add in more of those superfoods that, that they list out for you and you can focus on those avoid list and obviously everything on your enjoy list is perfect as well. And then the minimize list, which will give you a list of foods that you shouldn't be consuming more than 20% of your daily calories within the minimize list. So it'll give you that too. Now, here's what's important. I would recommend, especially if your gut is in a similar situation that mine was in when I first started, that you just focus on getting that down to heal your gut and getting your microbiome on board with you now working on your health goals. And then once you start feeling like you're healing those things and your taste buds are starting to change and you're starting to want to eat different types of foods, um, that's when I would start. And actually that you're fuller on less and you're not as hungry and you don't have those cravings as much, then that's when you want to say, okay, now I'm going to focus on fat loss because I think I've healed a lot of these issues within myself. I'm no longer feeling the, the bloating, the pain, the discomfort, and you know what foods you're like on track with what foods you should be eating. Then start implementing like a calorie restriction, maybe go towards a smaller eating window. Obviously, you want to do the fasting within that first initial phase so that you are healing your gut um, at the same time and starving off those bad gut bugs. And then start working on the fasting for the fat loss benefits as well as um, a calorie restriction because we cannot overeat on foods and expect to lose body fat. Your body needs to be in a situation where 
you are taking in less than you are burning. Your body is burning. And that, yes, of course, your gut bugs are going to help you in many ways because they're going to be consuming a lot of the foods that you're eating and creating different things like butyrate to help you with your goals as well. But you definitely want to be mindful of not overeating and not binge eating and not eating too much, right? We want to be careful of that. And that's where cutting back on the alcohol definitely helps because you will eat less in that scenario. Plus, you won't be getting those um, those calories from the alcohol that is empty calories. You will be getting the calories you need from the nutrition your body needs, especially with fasting. That's really, really important. So that's where I would start, okay? From this video right now, today, if you want to heal your microbiome within three to five days, start with the fasting, drink water, black coffee, or if you want to implement those ketones to help you with the hunger and the appetite control while you're in this phase, you can do that. I'll put a link down below for a free sample if you want to try it out, or I do have different variety kits if you want to try those. And then... Um, start working on adding in some of these foods that are going to help your body. You can get a, a probiotic or prebiotic to be consuming during this period of time when you're really trying to heal things and get a new gut bacteria growing here. And I would suggest adding in like the sauerkraut or something like that. Even if you're not hungry, just eating it just to just get that into your microbiome, I think is very, very helpful. And it's minimal calories like sauerkraut zero for the Bubby's brand. I would love to hear your experience with your microbiome and healing you may have done or what happens after you watch this video and start implementing some of these things. Um, like I said, once you your population of gut bugs start overpowering the bad bugs, you're not like a lot of times people are like, I have a sweet tooth. How do I stop eating sugar? How do I stop eating this? How do I stop craving this? The, when you have the large population of those beneficial bacteria, they crave healthy, fiber-rich foods. And the more of them you have, the more of those cravings you're going to have, and the more of those those bugs that thrive off of like the sugar, the processed food and that sort of thing, those will starve off and you won't have the cravings for them. So it's just going to take you time to start making those shifts and changes. Now, I know when I was in the Keys and I was drinking a lot of these sugary alcoholic drinks, I was doing a ton of freaking damage to myself and I now regret doing it. But at the same time, it's like, you know what? We are here and we only live once and there are some things in life that you just want to do and it's okay. You can just come back and you can just then get back on track and start working on the repair and, and going in the opposite direction. But I could definitely see how quickly it did take for my body to just, my bugs, my gut to just go into that state that I was in previously where I was struggling. So, um, when you're healing yourself, this is a lifelong thing that you're going to just need to be mindful of because this is a living, um, I don't know if you have a green thumb or if you kill every plant you have, <laughs> but if you can learn to have a green thumb with your own microbiome, um, just think of it like a forest, you know, or a garden or something that you just want to make sure you have just the most beautiful, amazing, abundant plants that are of the healthy variety and the most beautiful and you want to get rid of those ugly, nasty, brown things that are just, you, you want to keep it nicely trimmed. <laughs> okay, so thanks guys for watching this one. I hope you catch me on the next episode of this podcast. We are actually going to be talking about having an abundant mindset and how creating abundance within your life, using I am statements, staying in a positive mindset, and all of these things correlate and tie in with reaching your own health and fitness goals. And so I'm going to talk about different ways that I've created this abundance within my life to be able to separate myself from a lot of the stress that would also hold you back from reaching your goals, all from my phone and using the law of attraction and all of these different ways to do that as well. So we're going to go into a deep dive on that next. So be sure to watch that episode. And if you missed last week on, on OMAD fasting, even if one meal a day fasting sounds like it's nothing you would want to do, I think you will get a ton of benefit out of that for fasting in general from all different aspects of 18-hour fast, 12-hour fast, whatever it is that you want to do. Thanks guys for watching this one. Take care.